Hey, welcome back. So we've covered quite a few things in this video series. I've become super strong with bodyweight exercises, the foundational exercises you need so you can build that strength without spending a lot of time in skills practice. Also techniques, the do's and don'ts of that, some specific tips you can apply to push-ups and handstand push-ups that can really help you out. Now I want to talk about the key to making progress in all training, and that is progression. You need to make progress in order to make progress. And this can come in a number of different factors, but the key for really building strength is adding weight or adding load to the exercises making them progressively more difficult so that you need more strength in order to be able to do them. Now, when you're working with barbells, dumbbells, and kettlebells, adding weight is easy. You just use more weight for the exercises. And while you can weigh certain body weight exercises, there are other ones where you can't easily without an expensive apparatus. For instance, uh, pull-ups or chin-ups. Uh, there are some ways if you have a machine that you can use less of your body, though it kind of changes the movement. You can use cables in some ways, but really to work for this movement progressively, you need to manipulate the leverage of the movement in order to make it easier so that you're able to do it. Because most people, a lot of people when they start out, they can't just jump on a bar and pull themselves over. They can't handle their entire body weight. I know I certainly couldn't many years ago. Same with a one-arm chain, if you're working toward that skill, you must become clever in how you progress with these exercises or else you'll just be stuck at a plateau for a long time. If you could just do pull-ups or one-arm pull-ups, the gap between those is not here, but huge. The gap between those exercises, the degree of strength it takes. So you need to find ways to go along in progression along that path in order to get to the end goal. So I'm going to talk about a few things, specifically with the push-up again, manipulating the leverage of the movement so that you're able to make progress with this movement. Did you notice in the last video when I was giving you those technique tips on the handstand push-up, that those ways to actually make progressively easier and harder that movement? There's many more to show you, but let's go on to the push-up right now. In the previous video, I was talking about helping some of the female clients to get to be able to do a full range push-up for the first time. Now, most of them can't do it. Uh, even a lot of them have problems with push-ups from the knees, which is a great starting point. If that's where you're at, that's definitely where you should start. And from there, you can build up. So for the push-up from the knees, you're still keeping everything the same. You still want that same body position. like that. Uh, it's a really easy movement in that it lessens the leverage that you have. Uh, with the normal push-up, you're handling about 55% of your body weight. The problem is the jump from going to the knees to the feet is a pretty big jump. So uh, most people aren't going to be able to instantly make that jump unless they're well beyond it. Something you can do is use an inclined surface. You can even go to the wall and do push-ups against the wall for, uh, to make this really easy. I'm not going to show that one, but join you doing inclined push-ups here. So, I am now handling less of my body weight because more of it's going to be on the feet. And using stackable steps like this is easy. You just subtract one and you can make progression that way. Uh, if you don't have steps, there's plenty of other things you can use as long as it's stable and you can make progress this way. But using these, I'm able to get the clients doing full ranges of the motion. So it's really working the muscles in those ranges where they need in order to be able to eventually do a full range push up on the floor. So you work this down until you get to a regular push-up on the floor, then what's the next step? Well, if you're only doing one regular push-up, then you can definitely work on adding volume. Volume and density of exercises, also there's a few other forms of progression you can use the uh, weight or variations of load and leverage for the intensity of the movement. Volume and density are the big three you want to focus on. Uh, from there, once you're able to do regular push-ups with some ease, you want to then, of course, work on making the exercise harder, thus 
worsening your leverage to make it harder, thus you need more strength for it. So the next step is then to do decline push-ups, where you raise up your feet so you have more of your body weight on your hands. Again, with these stackable steps, you can take it step at a time to go from there. So as we do this, uh, you can start to get real high with these two, and you're also changing the angle of it from just the horizontal plane, where it's been pretty much this entire time, uh, depending on how high you start with the incline push-ups. You're starting to work it toward the handstand push-up, the vertical line of motion. So if your steps don't go high enough, or you've gotten to a point you want to start working toward the wall, you may not go all the way up into a handstand right away, because handling 100% of your body weight can still be a big jump from 80%, for instance, what you may be doing with those decline push-ups. Something else you can do is walk your feet up the wall, various angles here. Now this exercise in some ways can be harder than the handstand push-up because it's going to take a lot of core strength to stabilize the body as opposed to the handstand where your vertical it actually takes a bit less. Also it's kind of awkward with that so it's definitely not my favorite movement though it can be used in there. There are some other forms of progression I think that bridge the gap even better but let's say from the incline push-ups you can get up into your handstand and start working from there. With the handstand, you may need to start with just a partial range of motion, and that's fine. Start where you're at and build from there. Uh, when I first had the goal to do a handstand, handstand push-up, I couldn't even move an inch without falling on the ground. I had to really build up. Even the partial movements is going to help you with that big time. So, simple as that, you lower until your head touches, going up, you can still play with your technique, changing this to make it harder and easier. So there's a lot that can go into that, a lot of subtle changes you can make to work yourself down to the ground. Uh, last step in that 
there's no one alive that I've seen on a video or anything of one a person able to actually do it in the form described in that book. Uh, it's still a great book. There's other programs, a lot of bodyweight training programs just throw hundreds or thousands of exercises at you. Sheer variety is only going to confuse you. And really when there's not progression laid out step by step, you can start at this point and this is how you make it towards the next step. Sheer variety, hundreds of different moves isn't really going to help you out. And that's a big problem with a lot of bodyweight training programs out there. Now, a lot of bodyweight guys also hate weights. They say they're going to destroy them, and for some people, yeah, weights don't agree with them, but uh, weights do have a lot of use, and in many bodyweight exercises, adding weights to the movement is a very valid and very helpful form of progression. I like using weights. I believe every tool has its uses, advantages, and disadvantages, so why not use them all and get the benefits out of doing it? So I talk about how to combine weights uh, with the exercise and also combining other weight training exercises with body weight exercises. A lot of body weight training programs out there give you exact templates, exact workouts to follow. Now this is okay, but the problem is no one can really follow an exact templated schedule. Uh, either one, they're going to get injured somewhere along the way, two, they're just going to miss days and not following it exactly, three, they're going to change it up on their own anyway. So I've been a big proponent in the past year, a little longer than that, of the gym movement protocol, which is using your own biofeedback, uh, using testing to find the best exercises for you to do on any given day at any given time in order to make sure that you stay injury free and also make the best and fastest progress possible. So that's something that makes this program unique, applying that gym movement, the biofeedback testing protocol to all these movements, and it really works great with this because we've talked about the different techniques, the different forms of the leverage, changing the movements up a little bit. You can find the exact load, the exact exercise and technique and form of that exercise that works best for you at any given time and does make progress with that. So adding all these things together, I think this is one of the best programs out there on body weight training that gives you tons of ideas. I'm going to have a whole bunch more details for you later. I've released this just to some of my exclusive monthly members and they're loving it. You'll hear more about that later, but this will be the first time early next week when I release it out to the general public. So stay tuned, we'll have more details on that coming soon.